Welcome to Webinar Wednesday. Travis Horstman, Biomedical Account Manager for OneSource Document Management Services, is today's featured expert speaker. Webinar Wednesday would like to thank our sponsor, OneSource Site. The OneSource Document Site includes the most comprehensive online collection of IFUs and service manuals five databases available covering surgical instruments and equipment, tissues and implants, dental, biomedical, and facilities maintenance. For more information, please visit onesourcedocs.com. Let's give one lucky attendee the opportunity to win a Webinar Wednesday webinar t-shirt by answering the following question. In what year was OneSource Document Management Services founded by three medical device industry veterans? You can answer now using the questions feature on your webinar dashboard. A couple of reminders before we get started. Registration is now open for MD Expo in Tampa this November. Please visit mdexposhow.com to learn more about this one-of-a-kind conference where you can network with peers, earn CE credits, and learn the latest technology and advances in HTM. Also, for more exciting news, our December HTM Mixer will be in Nashville, Tennessee on December 9th and 10th. Please visit htmmixer.com for more details on this event. All right, today's webinar is eligible for one continuing education credit from the ACI. You can obtain your certificate by completing the post-webinar survey. More details on this at the end of today's webinar. We will wrap up today's presentation with a live Q&A. You can submit your questions anytime during the webinar by using the questions feature on the webinar dashboard. We will get through as many attendee questions as time allows. As I mentioned earlier, today's speaker is Travis Horstman. Travis will discuss strategies that will help your clinical engineering department adapt to the new environment of this medical community. These strategies include maintaining equipment, revising infection control programs, and adapting to the new medical atmosphere. Travis, you may begin whenever you are ready. Hi, thank you for the introduction. Uh, as stated, my, my name is Travis Horseman. I work with uh, OneSource Document Site. And uh, today's uh, webinar is going to be about improving medical maintenance while dealing with COVID-19. Uh, a little bit about me. I'm a former United States Air Force uh, AMI certified biomedical equipment technician. Uh, I have seven years experiences across uh, three treatment facilities as a biomed and the last two years of my uh, service, I, I was maintaining my own clinical engineering department. I've uh, been working for one source for about five years, researching and developing products and addressing the needs of clinical engineering departments. Uh, I'm also a reservist and I have five years as a cybersecurity specialist for the United States Air Force Reserve Command, and I currently hold a Security Plus certification. Uh, the objectives of this uh, webinar are really to discuss uh, how clinical engineering departments have been impacted and how, how the roles are changing uh, within the, the medical community as far as it relates to clinical engineering and healthcare technology management. I have some objectives here, but I want to make this more of a discussion base at the end. I'd really love to hear uh, questions that, that different departments or different BMETs are, are seeing or, or want to address and uh, get a discussion started about those. So the, the first objective is to discuss the impact of COVID-19 the, discuss the impact COVID-19 has had on clinical engineering departments, and I want to relate those to common practice changes, uh, the financial impact, and working with reduced staff. And I also want to discuss some 
some solutions to those new problems that have that have arisen uh, with COVID-19. It's even though we're we're kind of moving towards a state of normalcy with COVID-19, we're bound to have another outbreak in some areas, and uh, that could lead to another crisis mode uh, by the medical community in that area. Uh, and I also want to discuss the importance of one source to clinical engineering departments. It can really be a useful tool uh, just to kind of aid in, in new infection control programs, stricter standards, and just for the BMET in general uh, when they're dealing with, with a crisis. And, uh, and then I'm going to show you uh, the product a little bit. We just released a new site that, that's really useful, and uh, I wanted to take some questions. Sorry about that. Uh, so the impact of COVID-19 on clinical engineering departments. Uh, there's going to be changes regarding the quarantine of patients in the facility. A lot of facilities, when they have an outbreak, they'll have to split their hospital almost into two separate facilities. So you'll have uh, areas that, that were used for, for other services are now going to be quarantined off, and those will be strictly for COVID-19 patients. Uh, you're still going to have the normal uh, people getting sick uh, coming into your facility, so that's that's something that that you need to be aware of as a as a clinical engineer. Like, if you can go into a quarantine area or what the requirements are for setting it up, uh, you're going to be working with uh, reduced staff during times of infections. A lot of biomedical shops went on a team; they would break their their department into teams, so they could control the, the infection. So if one team would work in the day or off days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or something like that, so they, they wouldn't cross-contaminate each other uh, and reduce the, the, the spread of the infectious disease. Uh, there's gonna be changes in budgetary constraints, which I'm sure many of us are aware to CE departments. Normal, normal purchases and uh, budgetary like forecasts will change greatly due to the impact of having to, to cycle those funds into like a COVID-19 fund almost. And it, there are some, some ways to get more uh, funding from, from federal programs and, and new guidance as it's released. And also just uh, the PPE and quarantine practices. Uh, for a BMET, we, we move around the hospital a lot. So you're gonna have to go into to quarantine areas. You're going to have to don your PPE and you need to make sure you follow the proper procedures so you don't contaminate another area of the facility and, and cause more stress to your department and the hospital as a whole. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the financial impact. Uh, so as I stated before, new expenses are going to cause budgets to be impacted. Uh, some facilities will have to rapidly increase the amount of a certain modality of piece of equipment, such as like ventilators. And I mean, that was a big talk back in when when this all broke out was ventilators and respirators. And the the whole COVID is is evolving, but it's 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 important to to know that that most likely another another crisis may occur as far as an influx of patients. So you want to make sure that you, you plan for, for these new expected expenses and, and also unexpected medical uh, equipment and PPE purchases. You may have to, to purchase more, even though you've planned for it, there may be a time when you're, you're running out of your PPE or, uh, or different medical advice, uh, devices. As stated before, uh, there can be a large expense when you when you quarantine a whole section of the hospital. You have to move patients, uh, requisition other areas, and, and kind of change the layout of your facility as a whole. So that's also going to impact the budget for staff and and, and other uh, test equipment that you may have had in the pipeline. Uh, Obviously, budget constraints can affect the amount of staff that you can have. You may have to, to cut a BMET or furlough a BMET for a short time, 
and 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 then you'll have to make it work with the lower amount of staff. So that's something that to keep in keep in context when you're when you're dealing with with an outbreak. Uh, so you're gonna uh, have to reduce your staff while increasing workload. And this this not only speaks to furloughs, but it also speaks to like working as uh, separate teams. They might not have as many hours, so they'll have to still do the same amount of work, if not more, uh, with lower staff. And it's it's bound to happen across across your site if an outbreak occurs. Uh, you want to make sure you discuss like have a plan in place to to implement this this like crisis plan when you're when you're dealing with an outbreak. Say okay, we have this plan in place. You're going to go on nights. You're going to go on days. You're going to come in Mondays. You're going to come in Wednesdays. Uh, it's important for them to to be aware so you don't have to deal with a lot of questions and, and people showing up or, or not showing up so it's, it's important to have that kind of settled out now that we know that what the what the impact of this will really have on your facility uh, another great thing that's coming out is uh, utilizing new tools uh, that are available to make maintenance more efficient without sacrificing quality and some of the new new uh, tools include like host-based CMMS software systems that can be used uh, in a lightweight fashion, so they can be used on your phone or on a tablet across your your site, and you can you can communicate directly with different departments on it. That's that's really having an impact in increasing your your info sources or your infoware, I guess if you if you want to call it that, uh, to increase. There's going to be a lot of uh, patients being seen uh, with telemedicine now. So that'll that'll help reduce the, the strain on biomeds, but to have a maintenance software that's adaptable, that you can track uh, different metrics that you may not have needed to track in the past. And a lot of the new uh, CMMS platforms are, are starting to offer like a host-based system that, that you can add and, and constantly develop as the needs arise specifically to your facility. Uh, and also, just being creative, DMETs are some of the most resourceful people in a in a facility. So a lot of uh, hospital staff will come to DMETs and and kind of ask for solutions and ping off solutions. I know one solution that was made uh, during COVID that that I that I heard about was uh, being able to service equipment without entering into quarantine areas. And it was DMETs that came up. They just increase the patient lines on infusion pumps and they they could house the infusion pumps outside a quarantine patient's room and that that reduced the amount of PPE they had to don it improved maintenance and also uh, as far as the nursing staff when they have to change uh, medicines or, or check an alarm uh, they don't have to to don and 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 take it off and put it back on uh, all the time uh, reducing the amount of PPE you're using uh, and and as always, clinical engineering is a is a hub for information. So uh, staff members, nurses, techs are gonna gonna ask BMETs to to find stuff, to to know stuff specifically related to to COVID or to to medical devices or cleaning standards. So it's important to have, and you can couple that with your different with your CMMS software, with your different sources to make it a community based effort. But it's it's something that that will happen for uh, as far as BMETs are concerned or, or clinical engineering departments. So just be prepared for that. Know where to find all the stuff that they might need. Uh, a lot of BMETs are being tasked with with extra extra tasks and associated with with knowing like infection control procedures. How is this supposed to be cleaned? How do we know if this piece of equipment being dropped off has been cleaned? And if you have the, the data set up, you can track and say, okay, this person cleaned it here, we're good to go. We don't have to go through and spend time and money on all these chemicals and, and time cleaning it to, to really, to, to even start working or servicing it. So that's another thing to keep in mind when dealing with this. Uh, so in preparing for, for an outbreak, uh, you want to uh, talk to your procurement 
office and, and, and departments to, to make sure that, that you have the ability and the, the movement to acquire equipment quickly, even if it, it might not be available. So you might have to get creative where how you can find it, how you can implement it in a, in a quick time frame if an un unexpected uh, outbreak were to occur. Um, you, uh, another good thing is to know your site's load limitations, know your medical gas load limitations, how many, how many ventilators can you hook up to patients in your site without taxing the system uh, so much that you, you aren't able to get the pressures needed to, to run the equipment. Uh, it goes for uh, different load requirements as well, especially uh, information technology with the increase of telemedicine. You want to sure, make sure your your IT department has been beefing up their their i their IT infrastructure so they can uh, accommodate all the new uh, community-based telemedicine that that you might have to 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 deploy from your actual site as opposed uh, to where in the past they would just come into the facility and get seen. Uh, and you want to secure your communicate. You want to make sure you have good communication. So you can have the the ongoing uh, uh, strategies and 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 back and forth between your your different staff members and even different hospitals within your organization to see how they're dealing with it. See if they need any help. You can request help. You can get ideas of how they're developing this. It just it needs to be open communication and and secure, so you know where the information is coming from. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, new technology to improve efficiency. There's there's tons of new stuff coming out as far as uh, specifically geared to adjust to this new climate. Like uh, like like I said, like the CMMS host base, like being able to track when stuff's clean. You, you you really didn't have to do that before, but now it's like has it. You want to be able to to track. Okay, this has been this has been clean and it's been cleaned according with the proper procedure and is verified and checked by this person before it came over here. Especially if another hospital system is taxed and they're they're kind of pulling their resources from another site. Uh, there's also uh, increased uh, telemedicine software systems that can remain secure, so patient data is not infiltrated or 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 extrapolated from from a communication, uh, and just research the the standards have been changing. So I mean, just research the proper PPE procedures for quarantine and non quarantine areas, and this can change greatly across different organizations. So just make sure you have your organization's policy uh, under wraps, so you know if something happens, you can refer to that and immediately implement that without any questions or, or any any mis, misnomers of, of of procedures that you might experience. And so and then it it comes back to to one source. Um, I just want to talk about the importance of one source as as it pertains to this topic of, of COVID-19. So, so one source uh, can be used as a tool to reduce the amount of physical documents needed. There was a, uh, uh, there's a push to, to move away from, from physical uh, actual documents because that can, not only for the general concerns that it can kind of muck up your, your department or your shop, but it, it's also, uh, it can, it's just an extra surface that, COVID could live on, even though it's evolving now, it looks like, and and there's many different sources, but it, it looks like it may not be able to survive on surfaces as, as well as we once thought originally when this came out. But this is just a good practice. You don't have to have papers around. You can just, you, you access everything digitally. It can be implemented into your CMMS, and you can use it uh, seamlessly from any location in in your facility. So so techs, if they do have to don the PPE and they go into a room to to maintain a physical or maintain a physical device and then uh, another problem comes up they weren't prepared for, they can easily access uh, one source directly from that space and have access to those documents instead of like going back to the shop, checking it, researching it. You can have access to the most 
up-to-date manuals available at any time. And also, uh, when you do have to acquire like new equipment, and, and sometimes the equipment wasn't wasn't necessarily new; it was it was older devices that you were that hospitals were getting. And uh, just in a in a crisis mode, they needed to grab whatever they could. Uh, one source has has a plethora of of older devices along with uh, end of life letters, uh, so you can really know if if what you're getting can be maintained and how to how to operate and maintain it is is pretty critical. Okay, and now I wanted to just show the the one source website in a in a quick product demo to kind of go over uh what what one source is if if anybody if no one's familiar and and kind of show you what what the search capabilities and how how fast it is so let me just switch my screens Gonna move this over here. Okay, so this is one source's uh, website. This is where you'll go once you log in. Uh, all there is is just one single search bar. It, it works similarly to Amazon. It's it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. But but when you start typing something in, uh, it gives you suggestions. And these hourglass figures right here uh, mean you've already searched for it. And these just are suggestions on what to to search for, but you don't. You can just enter anything as you as you want. You can type literally anything in here and it'll query uh, the entire system and and kind of pull up anything that that it hits that's related to. So I just hit enter, and this is how the view will normally be seen the the first time you you access it. So you see there's there's different categories here for uh, our favorites function, which is a great tool, it can be used to tag individual items. So if you're a BMET and you realize that you're getting all this new equipment, you could you could tag uh, you can tag items in a special category called COVID. And so you know, okay, this is my COVID-related medical devices. And then and then whenever you're going into a, a quarantine area or a COVID-related area, however you want to, you see this this item would immediately show up. And another great feature is is the notes function. So this can be used for biomeds. You can put the PM procedure is contained on a certain page number, or you know this is the problem I had with with this item. Make sure you check this. You know just to to share share the data across the facility. And these these categories and notes are unique to each individual login. So each facility would be able to see and share data seamlessly through this this feature. And uh and then you just save the favorite and it's in there. And we'll go back to favorites in a second to to show you. Uh so and then the manufacturer of course, uh instrument catalog and we do uh try to list everything that's on the device uh, document. So you'll see numbers and also trade names. So we try to capture all that data for you. Uh, and then you'll uh, the general description of the the device. You can see that that it it also indicates that this is the operation and maintenance manual. Uh, we we definitely want to make sure you know that the the device is is current. The device document is current, so we we have an indicator there: current uh, versus revised. So current means that we've reviewed it on the date uh, set here. And uh, biomedical documents are reviewed every year. So uh, in uh, February, this one will be reviewed again. Uh, and when we, we call and we review it, if there's no change to the document, we'll keep the status as current. If we go and we call and the device has been changed or the, the document has been revised or updated with a new revision, we'll, we'll indicate that here on the review status by revised. And that can be an indicator to to go check the document and make sure that the procedures are aligned. We also have a way if you've added any document to your favorite section, you can get a notification email when the document is when the document does go into a revised status. And that's pretty easy to do. Uh, you just go in here, notification email, you click that, and then you can add your different uh, emails there.
And so we're back at the search screen. So uh, I just want to show you uh, the card view. And right here is the document type as well. So you can uh, go into the document type and see what kind of document it actually is. Uh, and there's also features over here. Tech ready documents are usually uh, related to uh, sterile processing departments. They what they are is they're documents that you can put the they'll take the relevant cleaning and sterilization uh, information and put it on the cover letter before you get to the IFU. So that's really useful, uh, especially with COVID. You can access this and like if your techs are are, are having questions about how to clean something or you know. What, what kind of chemicals to use, you can quickly, you know, access a tech ready document and kind of send it to them or give them access to it. And they'll be able to to get that information uh, right there. And then they, they'll they know how to get it in the future as well. And that can, uh, with, with new infection control procedures, that's a really useful uh, tool to use. And we also implemented this new uh, card feature. And it's basically just just a more aesthetically pleasing view that has a little bit information laid out a little different ways. Uh, you can see that this the status is an obsolete model. It kind of it kind of helps you uh, really see what's what's going on. And uh, and it also works like uh, Amazon in the way you can really uh, find what you need really quickly. So I want to look at just the biomedical documents and we can pick a manufacturer. And then this will show all the documents related to that manufacturer. And we can go to technical manual and view the document. And what we do is we bookmark our documents for BMED so they can they can find the relevant information that they need. And it, it, it appears different on different uh, browsers. This is Google Chrome. So this is the way it would be presented to you. And you can go down to the technical manual. You can access the preventative maintenance, the corrective maintenance, troubleshooting, Illustrated parts guides, and it's all just links to the document. So we haven't manipulated or changed the document in any way. And uh, to go to your now, like, say you've added something to favorites, and you wanna you wanna look at uh, the categories to get ready to go do some maintenance. And right here is your my favorites, and these are the categories that I've added. So here's the COVID category we just added, and right there is the Sancor pump and control solutions uh, infusion pump that we added. So this is another useful tool that can help your staff uh, quickly access, especially if there's there's new devices that that you're unfamiliar with or unfamiliar of the the regulations. Uh, can really help. And uh, just real quick, the the recent revisions tab. This will show you everything that you've looked at. And opened uh, recently, so if you if you've been in the system, kind of researching stuff, you can come back here and quickly. Uh, uh, the recently reviewed, I'm sorry, the recently reviewed tab is something that you've you've looked at recently, and you can come back and just tag them to add to your favorites. So that's a useful tool. The recent revisions tab is the list of all the devices that are that are in revised status, so you can quickly. Uh, check to see if it's been revised. Uh, in our news and resources tab, we have actual reports that we run every week. And if you notice the equipment's been revised and you wanna know the individual specific changes to that document, uh, you can come here and you can look at a report from the revised document. And here it'll say uh, what the new revision is, uh, what the device, the document name is, and uh, if there's any changes in the document. And here, uh, we pull out the individual uh, screenshots from the, the document itself and put them here, or we'll indicate it here if, if anything has been updated. So that's a really useful tool for tracking changes, and that's one of the benefits of having a team behind the database to constantly update uh, the products. And we also have a training tab here where you can kind of look and see how to use the system. And uh, Throughout the life of a, of a subscription, we have unlimited training sessions, and we have a dedicated training manager that will go through and and kind of answer any questions. We can gear training over a large organization to your specific policies and procedures, 
if you wanted people to access it a certain way or build your categories in a certain way. Uh, it, it's a really useful tool to get your entire system on the same page. And uh, with infection control, this is great because biomeds are inevitably going to be asked, uh, is this the right, uh, is this right? You know, that's typically what I used to hear. Is this, am I doing this right? Am I supposed to clean this? Like, how am I supposed to clean this? What are the procedures? And here uh, we have uh, different databases that you can quickly access and be like, okay, yeah, this is what you need to do. Here's the document. This is how you access it, etc. And that's pretty much a, a brief overview of, of our database. We have uh, surgical instruments, equipment database, uh, which is for the proper cleaning and, and sterilization and disinfection of medical equipment and surgical instruments. Uh, our dental uh, database is uh, geared towards dental clinics and dental facilities. So if you do a lot of dental, you'll have access to all dental implants, the SDSs, consumables, and instruments and equipment. Uh, our tissue and implants database is a new database that we've been implant implementing that's that's been taking off. It's it's for your ORs to track tissue and implants. Uh, the care and use instruction for implanted and uh, uh, biological and non-biological tissue and implants. The care the care for use instructions and the IFUs for those. And another great one that uh, that I really like is our facilities maintenance database. So this is this is gonna house everything that's non-medical, your IT equipment, your air handlers, your medical gas systems, your uh, alarm systems, fire extinguishers. It, it even goes down to like microwaves and coffee makers. So it's, it's a kind of a, a complete, a complete uh, system if you needed all these documents. And it's just, it's, it's just a great resource that can be accessed at any time through an outbreak or not an outbreak. And you can really hone your infection control procedures uh, using the system to prepare properly and and to have a, a, a plan in place if something does happen. And so now I'm going to uh, turn it back over uh, for questions at this time. Travis, thank you so much for this valuable information. Uh, we do have a few questions that have come in from the audience. As a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please use the question function on your GoToWebinar dashboard. Our first question that has come in, Travis, is where can we find resources for COVID-19? Okay. Well, thank you. Uh so as many of us know, there's there's many different resources. I would stick, JCO has a great uh, website with some resources um, involved uh, directly related to COVID-19 and how they're kind of changing and, and putting information out there for for different facilities. Also, the FDA site is a, is a great resource. I would try to stick to resources you know and are confident in. You're gonna get the, the right and correct information. And also uh, manufacturers themselves, or even uh, one source is a great resource as well. So you can ping us. We have a customer service department that, that will answer your questions about different devices. And if we don't know, we'll definitely reach out and find out for you. Great, thank you so much. Um, our next question is what CMMSs promote a lightweight solution? that can be adapted to the new challenges that COVID-19 brings? Okay, well, I, I touched on it a little bit within the, the webinar, but uh, most new uh, CMMS softwares, if you were thinking about upgrading your CMMS, I would definitely look at what they offer as far as that type of solution. Do they Do they support like cross communication through multiple departments, is it easily used and understood? Uh, to to and it, and is it is it host based or is it is it a heavy software that that's going to ride on your on your current operating system and and maybe bog it down? So it's important to kind of address those concerns. But most new 
uh, products coming out are are all kind of host based and lightweight. Uh, there's some big players in there that like Volo, uh, Accruent with uh, Connective. Uh, there's also many others that that offer those same types of solutions. Okay, our next question, uh, Travis, is are the documents in one source up to date? Okay, that's that's a common question and and they are, so we we do have uh ISO approved procedures that Uh, we do have ISO approved procedures for updating our documents. So we've had inspectors come in and and kind of look at our processes and make sure we're doing what we say. But for our surgical instrument uh, database, we update uh, those documents every three months since they change very rapidly. And our equipment and biomedical documents are updated every year. And that's a trained individual that's usually a former BMET or a former hospital staff We'll call the manufacturer. Uh, they'll work with the facility if need be that requested the document and, and get the updated document every year. So we try to ensure through every means necessary that these documents are up to date and useful. Great, thank you. Our next question is, with facilities that have that have had impacts due to reduced staff, how are they mitigating the work that needs to be done to still meet accreditation requirements? Well, that's a great question. So a lot of a lot of hospitals are reducing staff, so they have to they have to come up with creative ways to kind of still complete the work. And unfortunately, it, it looks as though uh, they'll either uh, update their their AEM cycles potentially to and do a risk analysis a risk assessment on medical devices to to kind of downgrade certain devices that don't need maintenance even though the manufacturer recommendation is one way they can do a risk analysis and kind of identify that this device can be maintained perhaps in a longer cycle than it was before before and they can document it in an alternative equipment maintenance cycle and, and meet requirements in that way. Uh, un unfortunately, it, 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 does, it does crunch the, the BMET's workload and we're already, in some facilities, uh, BMET's are already overworked. So it's, it's just kind of adapting. Uh, using new software can help. Uh, having one source as a, as a, a go-to to get your, your your documents uh, right there quicker, faster. There was a lot of time I spent kind of looking for documents uh, that that don't need to happen anymore. So it, it can it can also help um, keep procedures in house, of course, since you have access to more documents. But I mean, just just trying to utilize technology. I mean, that's that's kind of all we can do. I know the the medical staff and, and the hospital staff are using technology to to address those concerns on their end. They have a lot of telemedicine work. They uh, they don't require patients to come in. They can treat them uh, from afar. So, so BMETs can in turn use a similar technology to kind of adapt their own procedures and policies to kind of take advantage of those small little uh, aids in, in their maintenance procedures and, and, and workload. So I hope that answers your question. Great, Travis, thank you. Um, next question is, um, I, I suppose, from a student that we've been working with um, who is interested in a similar field. What sort of advice would you have for upcoming students who are interested in following a similar path that you have taken? Okay, I mean, that's great. Uh, so as a student, uh, the being a biomedical equipment technician is, is incredibly rewarding and it's, it's always changing. You never have to work on the same device twice, it seems like. You, you have an ability to grow, 
your technical expertise uh, across many different modalities. Uh, as far as a student just starting out, I would I would pick an educational program that you know is accredited and you know people are getting uh, employed from. That's that would be the first thing. And another thing would be to try to get on as a intern at a medical treatment facility, and that. Uh, that will give you exposure to medical equipment. And you want to also make sure your program deals with uh, hands-on learning. Uh, a lot of what CMEDS do is kind of, you have to think outside the box when a problem happens, you need to be able to take things apart, put them together, uh, a little bit of electronic troubleshooting. So so just pick a, pick a program that has all those in it. And uh, as you move further in your career, uh, I would look towards finding an interest, a, a modality that really interests you and kind of going after it. There's, there's many different modalities that are, that are really rewarding. So you can work on um, radiology equipment is a big one. And then the, in, within radiology, you can specialize for computed tomography, uh, MRI machines, uh, and then also ultrasound machines are, are great to, to, to kind of spear into it. will It'll give you a lot of uh, not only monetary gains but also personal gains because you'll really know the system in and out. And then there's there's other folks that, as a student, they want to work kind of on everything. They want to be a jack of all trades and stay more uh, more mechanical. So like sterilizers is a is a good route to go in if you're really mechanical and hydraulic systems and you like that kind of thing. So it's it's a great field, and I would encourage him to or her to to really reach out and, and find and do some research on the different training programs and uh, and start reaching out to facilities and see if if they're accepting interns. A lot of facilities do. Thank you for that answer. Um, next question is: um, Do you have examples of um, or have you heard of positive experiences within hospitals? Uh, getting resources, getting their resources updated uh, accordingly, as you've talked about a little bit. Uh, in what context? I'm sorry. Uh, like resources as far as uh, acquiring the proper PPE, or like just kind of gearing up for the next outbreak. Um, yes, it, it, the the resources that you've discussed here the um, to help with with outbreaks, uh, as you mentioned, anything like that, any sort of positive experience well, yeah, that I, you've yeah, heard, heard of? of uh, yeah, like so the the being creative thing. I thought that was that was pretty clever. I heard of of uh, facilities kind of adapting to uh, to treating patients within quarantine areas to reduce the cost of of donning PPE and 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 when it's not available, what are they going to do? So uh, that that was one I've heard of. Um, uh, I've talked to a couple different sites that did the uh, they would split their their staff up when it when it when it hit to reduce the risk of infection uh, that was a that actually turned out successful they were able to contain an outbreak within one team so they weren't left with with everybody sick and no one can work um, as far as the financial a lot of facilities are, are now adapting to the new financial environment they're they're planning for these things so now they're able to to schedule and make those purchases that are necessary that were put off by covid and they they anticipate you know everybody anticipates uh this winter uh, like a new outbreak or a new a new crisis might occur uh concerning this virus so they've been able to really uh, stretch their budgets and, and plan for this. And I know uh, using an updated CMMS or using uh, one source, those those resources have have a lot of facilities are now going to a newer system, even though the old system is is what they they really liked and and used for years. They want to go to something new that that's not heavy, that's that's lightweight, that they can they can communicate with different members of their staff. They can access you know, one source or different documents from it uh, directly. And and also uh, with the use of one source, uh, it, it really can save facilities money, especially in the medical maintenance uh, realm. So it's 
so I, I've heard a lot of, of course I work for one source, I've heard a lot of uh, feedback from from biomeds or clean, clinical engineers that that using one source has saved them money by just being able to just keep procedures in house and and they don't have to spend the time searching for the documents and and also kind of updating their their equipment and their services. We have all the end of life docs that they might not have been aware of when they were looking to acquire something. So it's it's they can see it. Oh, it's going to go obsolete in six years. Let's look at something else to to stretch the 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 time you're going to use that piece of equipment. Uh, some other uh, positive. Uh, let me see. And I think there's there's many more, of course, but um, that's just the general from using these these resources. Uh, so I hope that that answers that question. That's great. Thank you so much, Travis, for a fantastic presentation. I'd like to encourage everyone to visit today's sponsor, OneSource, to learn more about the products they provide to our industry. Visit onesourcedocs.com. A quick reminder to our audience that you can obtain your CE certificate by completing the post-webinar survey. The survey will be emailed one hour after the completion of today's webinar. You must complete the survey to receive your one CE credit from the ACI. You will be able to download the certificate directly from your computer once the survey is submitted. If you have any questions, you can reach us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. We will be back next week with another webinar. Visit webinarwednesday.live for more details and complimentary registration.